Hi, welcome back. So, a lot has happened this week, and there is quite a bit to unpack. So let's get started. All right, straight to business. So a lot has happened this week, and it all bears mentioning on camera, not just in podcast form, sadly enough. So I hauled out the camera, brought it out here to the backyard where it is 95 degrees, according to whoever sends this data. 95 degrees. Okay, so where shall we start? Um, most of today's topics involve interactions with law enforcement. Big surprise, right? At the start of the week, uh, I got a visit regarding a reflector that is actually working right now. It's behind me because of the cloud. You can't really see it working, but there's a reflector bouncing light onto my back, working as a hair light. It's bouncing off this uh, little bouncy board over here, and it's helping to even out my lighting. It is not at risk of starting any fires. So I, I don't know who I need to reach out to. Do I, do I need to talk to teachers, people who might be at the front line working to educate future police officers, future people, future neighbors of mine? Please educate my neighbors. We're in the midst of a heat wave. We've had multiple days of triple digit temperatures here. And the sun strikes my window. I use a window unit to keep my room habitable during the summer. And there happens to be sunlight striking the window directly. So I thought, well, I've got, I've got my camera gear, production gear, uh, reflectors, bounce boards. I'm gonna set one up to put a little bit, bit of shade, to put some shade on the, on the air conditioner. See, like, like if this is the air conditioner and this is the, this is the bouncy board, we're gonna put some shade on it. Well, I think as, as the sun tracked across the, the sky that afternoon, I have a feeling that it bounced some light into the window of the neighbor's house, which they didn't like. They don't talk to me. What do they do? They call the cops. So cops came over and they just unloaded this litany of complaints from the neighbor. Everything from flying a drone over their house, which the drone was over this house and over the block. Uh, I don't want to get into that because I haven't even flown that drone this year. We're talking about something that happened more than a year ago. Anyway, they were not the subject of the photography. I was looking at, I was looking at these trees for one thing because I have to. I'm going to have to do some tree trimming, and I wanted to see how uh, even or uneven the growth was around these trees. So anyway. Let's move on from there, back to the bouncy board situation, the reflector. So the, uh, the, the, the officers who responded commented that the, the, the reflector, here, here it is, it's working right now. You see it on the back of my neck? It's over here. And I am not catching on fire. And the bouncy board, the other reflector over here, is not getting charred. So yeah, this reflector attracted the attention of the Waco Police Department. And the officer pointed out that it represented a fire hazard that the re reflection could, uh, if it bounced light into the trees, it might set them on fire. Now let's talk about simple physics. Any sunlight reflected off of any surface is not going to be anywhere near the intensity of the sun. In fact, when you think about it, if the sun itself is not setting your tree on fire, then the reflection of that sunlight diminished as it is by the surface of the reflector is also not going to have the intensity 
to start a fire. So please, somebody, educate Waco Police Department. Maybe get the fire department involved. I don't know what they know about optics and reflections and absorption patterns of various materials. But a, a, the, the, the reflector is flat. And a flat surface, a flat surface is not going to focus the light in such a way that it could catch a fire, set a fire, catch anything on fire is what I'm trying to say. I'm speaking from the benefit of, of uh, experience. I've been working in field production for a number of years and I've never had a bouncy board set anything on fire. It's much more likely that uh, maybe a water bottle, a clear water bottle or a glass, particularly a crystal glass, set out in the sun with a clear liquid and it could focus the rays of sunlight like a beam, like a laser, like a, not like a laser, like a, like a, like a magnifying glass, like a lens. In fact, the uh, officer said that, that my reflector was at, would act like a lens and burn down the trees, but that is absolutely false. So, uh, officer, whoever you were, I didn't get your name or badge number, whoever responded that day, uh, you are sadly mistaken. You're misinformed. I don't know who told you that a flat piece of metal reflecting sunlight would start a fire, but they were wrong. I don't know if you cooked this up yourself, you're wrong. Reflectors don't work that way. It's on the back of my neck right now. and. Do you see any smoke? I don't see any smoke. I don't smell Mohegan burning. This makes me want to point out that just, just as there's an overall infrastructure problem in this country, and I'm talking about roads and bridges failing, there's also a failure in the other core services like the police department. I think we've seen this illustrated very well in the wake of the Uvalde shooting massacre. Uh, we were led to believe that people with badges are heroes 24-7. And you know, they're just minted as heroes. We're finding out that's not the case, that, that uh, some of your heroes, some of those guys with badges, are actually cowardly dullards who are after just pursuing their own interests, sadly. And I've said this for years, and people have uh, chided me for saying this, but my point is illustrated with the videos and the stories, the facts that are coming out of the Uvalde shooting massacre. Now, talking about uh, more about the Waco Police Department, like I mentioned before, I've worked in television production for a number of years, and one of the shows I worked on locally was called Fixer Upper. It took off and became quite popular in many places. And early on in the production of that show, uh, we were visited, the production was visited by a Waco police officer. And he wanted to, he, he felt that he was talking to a bunch of out-of-towners and sure, some of them were from New York or L.A., but what they don't realize is that these reality shows tend to hire local people, and I was one of them. So when the Waco police officer approached the producer and said, uh, was pointing out that we needed to observe parking rules, that if we parked illegally, like against traffic, like you often see in this town, that we would be ticketed. So the producer came over to me and said, hey, uh, when, when you're parking the equipment van, the camera van, make sure you park it legally. Because that cop just told us that we'd face uh, tickets, that, that he would ticket us, that you know, we, would, we should expect to be ticketed if we park the wrong, if you park the vehicles the wrong way. Not true at all. I have many, many pictures, and I've seen, every day I drive down my block and I see cars parked the wrong way. So, what's happening here? The, the cops 
have their own version of a fiction that they like to impart to people. It, you know, if, if you are telling people that they need to park correctly, then, then enforce that. Enforce that here on my block where I live with the neighbors because they are, there are half a dozen cars right now parked the wrong way and I don't see anybody getting ticketed. There's just no such thing as enforcement. Uh, Waco police don't enforce traffic laws, speed limits, um, there's code enforcement issues, uh, there's animal control issues, rampant. I mean, noise ordinances that nobody cares about, fireworks ordinances that nobody observes, firearms discharged at all hours of the night. Moving on. The next topic is a road rage incident that occurred Friday morning on my way to work. Now, I realize it is, it's quite common for your morning commute to be dotted with some bad actors, some people who like to ride your bumpers, like to speed. Um, because the speed limits are not enforced in this town, uh, people just presume that they can drive as fast as they want to. And I put that back on the Waco Police Department and all the local law enforcement agencies. They're just not out enforcing uh, speed limits. So I was on my way to work and there was a lot of traffic and it was moving fairly slowly, but I don't let it get to me because I've planned ahead and I'm, I usually have enough time to get to work even if there's a few minutes of delay on the road. I've learned how to do that. This is something you learn when you live somewhere and you have to commute. Like I said, there are bad actors, people who like to ride up on your bumper, just like what happened to me in this illustration. Well, and when people do that, I tend to respond in the same way consistently like this. Well, that driver of that Chevy Silverado LT was watching me. He took his eyes off the road long enough to see me salute him in that manner. And he got, he got way bent out of shape and began to misbehave in this way. Now I was afraid for my life because it's Texas. We all have guns. I didn't want to have to return fire on this guy, but I had to wait to see what he was going to do, how, just how violent was his outburst going to be, how intense was this road rage incident going to become. He acted like he wanted me to stop, and for a moment I considered stopping. That it might be safer just to stop, but thank goodness my gut spoke to me and said, no, keep, keep driving, he's probably not going to try to hit you with his vehicle. It doesn't mean he might not try to shoot at me if he has a weapon on him, because he did roll down the window. He rolled down the window and he spewed a lot of obscenities. He called me a piece of shit, or he called my vehicle a piece of shit. And his rant continued until he eventually sped off into the distance. And he, he would have been breaking the speed limit, but as we all know, speed limits are not enforced. so. Once it, you know, we, we can't establish that a crime was committed because uh, local law enforcement won't enforce any speed limits. They have to get a special grant to do that, I found out. Um, I think the police budget for Waco is somewhere around $30 million annually. What do you get for your $30 million? You get a bunch of guys sucking down coffee and choking down donuts. If you want law enforcement, you have to pay extra, it turns out. So because the area where this incident occurred was outside of Waco city limits, it wasn't in Hewitt, the next town over to the south, it was out in the county. So I had to deal with a sheriff's deputy, Sheriff's Deputy Reynolds, badge number 196, at least that's what he gave me, was not the least bit interested or concerned about my plight. The story I described to him 
did not include any criminal activity. No laws were broken in the process. The uh, reckless driving might earn the driver a citation, but in the words of the sheriff's deputy, that would only occur in the event that the evidence supported such a charge and then the, the deputy would have to, and, and I'm quoting him, he would have to try to find the driver. Now tell me that the McLennan County Sheriff's Office doesn't have resources to look up somebody's license plate number and track them down. So he's acting like this person just is vanished. He's untraceable. He sped off into the sunset and was gone, a puff of unsmoke. So that's my rant for the week. I really don't want to make too many more of these. I have other things I want to do. I have other creative projects I want to embark on and not just list out all the horrible behavior that there is out there. How, you know, people driving badly, people uh, accusing others of trying to engage in arson. I was just trying to make some shade for my, for my window unit over there, to keep it functioning throughout this horrible heat wave we're having this summer. I suppose I can take a moment to, to um, follow up about the Bank of America story. So Bank of America sent my mother a couple of form letters apologizing for poor customer service that day, but nothing, there were no details about how anything was addressed. So that leaves room for speculation. So here's my speculation, and I'm following my gut on this one, and it's usually fairly correct about these things. Somebody, the tellers involved, allowed some personal bias to factor in to their, their day while they were conducting business for Bank of America. And that way impeded the service that we received that day. And by personal bias, I'm talking about that good old friend of ours, racism. You know, um, I'm Hispanic, so is my mother. Technically, we are Caucasians. The, the Spanish were the original white men that conquered this beautiful country, this land, this territory. Um, you know, the, the Spanish brought the horse across the ocean. But the, um, the Aryans like to uh, claim this skin tone for themselves. So uh, if you don't have their heritage, then you're, you're subhuman and you don't deserve the service that their brethren do. We've since been back to the bank and the service was, was good. The, there was no sign of the tellers that uh, wanted my mother to re repeat a code that was texted. I mean, since when do people really expect uh, an, an elderly person to, to like re be ready to act on some kind of technology? The local grocery store, HEB, just went to an, an all digital coupon format and it sparked some outrage from the elderly people in the community because you know, they, they've grown up I and mean, they, they've spent decades of their lives just carrying coupon, you know, clipping physical coupons and handing those in. And then and here comes HEB wanting to do away with all of that and insist that you use your, your phone to clip coupons. There was one time I was trying to use their app and because there wasn't good uh, mobile service in the building, 
I couldn't access the app, so I could not get that coupon to load. I had to wait a while to wander around and let that signal pop up so that the coupon would download. So, so I would say HEB needs to do something about that, maybe uh, provide free Wi-Fi for everybody in the building because those buildings are huge. They have a tendency to be so big, have so much steel, you know, steel and concrete that can block the mobile signal. Anyway, well, it's just after four, not after four, it's just after two. I've not been talking for that long, but I think I'm done for now. I hope that your weekend is wonderful. I hope that your week is better. Um, on a brighter note, I did get a job offer on Friday. So after that whole road rage incident, uh, I did get a phone call. I was expecting it to be like, like an idiot. I was expecting it to be uh, a sheriff officer following up with me, but instead it was a job offer and a pretty good one. I hope you have a better week and whatever happens, remember to transcend the bullshit. Yeah.